Well, if you're moving 150 with a play driver, then you should be at Worlds. Oh, that's ripped. That is killed. What are those numbers? That looked massive. 152 club speed. 198.8. Oh, four right. Oh my. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Tree. Well, here we are, La Quinta, California, Nicholas Club. Um, and it's finally out. hittable outside. It's not 45 yeah. degrees. Beautiful I guess you guys outside. do Fahrenheit. They're overseeding, so there's nobody on the other side of the range. So it's a pretty fun uh, spot to hit. We got a tree about 400 yards away. We do want to hit it, but we're not getting close. Well, that's the goal if we... If we can fly at 4:30, then we know we're our work is done. That's what I said. Is if our you hit a if, if you hit a house, happily pay for the damages because it means you've just hit a 400-yard drive. At this is actually I think it's below sea level here technically. That's right. Yeah, it is. But it's it's fun to see the other deck because we can kind of see how our balls roll out and we can see them land. So, pop fly. Yeah, this is the uh, morning of the World Championship Finals. I so am not there for the first time in 12 years. Mike ha won't get there for a little while. Well, yeah, so we're <laughs> different stages of our career. I'm kind of pseudo-retired. Yeah, and I'm getting into it. Mike so started. Yeah, so. I'm testing out Dan's 21 high into some other equipment right now because I've just been rolling Patterson shafts for last couple years yeah so and it's fun to have another lefty to compare equipment with oh it's so good yeah you normally get to do that yeah because every time other times like if you're a righty and you're sharing shafts everyone goes with the minus two tips right and then you're plus two on the lefty end all right this one's over the mountain snap oh. hook but it was hard 196 nope, ball. So 149.8 club speed, 209.2 .2 ball speed. Now we will say... Don't say. Okay, we won't say. <laughs> <laughs> They'll find out, like the GC3 or the Bushnell was reading faster than the flight scope, and now the flight scope is reading faster than the PRGR. So, and then yeah. you've done the PRGR with the Trackman, right? Yep, so I like the PRGR. I find it, it's humbling. <laughs> but if you do get faster on that, you're definitely getting faster. It's very consistent. Yeah. So the 209.2 is what I'm excited about. I haven't been 210 with a play driver since 20, 2017. Really? When I was all, yeah. Well, because you just went, I mean, we started filming it too late because you just went 211. I just went 211, yeah. Bummed we're not at uh, Worlds, but also happy to be fans. And um, Well, I got frustrated because I wanted to go to Am Worlds. But on the website, they never said, up until I talked to Reese back, like, in Utah, I think it was, no one ever said that Am Worlds was in Tennessee. I thought it was together with Open Worlds. So, like, I took the time off. Like, I was planning to go to Worlds thinking there would be an Am division yeah. at the same time. And it wasn't until August that I figured out yeah. I couldn't go. And, and that's how it had been in the past. This year they had the amateur uh, in Tennessee. They were going to have the seniors in Ocean Oceanside side. Which didn't end up have it happening, so the seniors and the uh, open and ladies were all in the same week. Yeah, but. and I was planning to go to the Ocean Side event as well. And they obviously, and then when I found out Worlds was in Tennessee for AMS, I was like, "Well, how is there an Ocean Side event?" And then they said, "Oh, there's no AMS at this event." So I'm like, "Oh my God!" So two of the events I wanted to do this year, I ended up not being able to. Yeah. Do. So a Andrew Agner won the uh, amateur fellow World lefty championship. Ryan Riesbeck won the Senior World Championship, and in my opinion, those are two of the most deserving guys in each division. Okay. Yeah, Riesbeck, is, it's, I mean, he puts in so much work. I know Bobby keeps talking about it in the live streams, and he's not kidding. Like, the amount of stuff that Ryan does for the sport and for the events is unreal. And Andrew's put in a ton of work to Yeah, to... well, the, the joke is Andrew's the... Professional. professional amateur and that's because he's been in the pro division <laughs> he's been trying to crack his way in the pros for 11 years hasn't been working out he 
not 11 years. I like to joke with him, but um, yeah, he's worked really hard this year. Put on a lot of speed with Sweet Heat, which now you're you're working with as well. I've I worked am. with him as well. But keeping that same theme of really deserving champions, who do you think is going to win the ladies in the Open tonight? I I didn't uh, I didn't get a chance to watch where the uh, top end of the ladies are at right now is. Monica Living, I'm guessing she's in it, right? That would be my my yep. pick. Monica Living is in it. And I guess Kelly's in it too, so we should cheer for fellow Canadians, I suppose. Yep. Yep. But I like, I mean, of all times for Kyle to get his first win of the season, I feel like. Yep. I feel like that's on par with the most with deserving man. I know Colton Castle is pretty deserving. Even James Tate just hit it he's, very well. I love Colton. He's hilarious. He's just a funny guy to be around. Yeah, James Tate hit it well. hasn't hasn't been able to come over due to COVID and um, putting on a show. Justin James had the best season so far. It's gonna be fun to watch. I'm gonna probably try the TPT and the XR. I think that'll be a competition setup for me is hitting that XR head. So I'll hit one more with uh, the X2 Hot. I'll have to do a video as well of me buying three batching drivers in two days and yeah. two of them happening to be your old driver. <laughs> yeah, now, we, now we know we're on the same stomping grounds. <laughs> yeah. We're buying each other's. I should have known. I'm in the, hey I, in the middle man. I'm in the desert and I found lefty heads used. Should have known. I mean, your PRGR is close to Trackman, I guess. And yeah, but I don't trust the club speed 150.7. I think that's... Uh, well, if you're moving 150 with a play driver, then you should be at Worlds. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's kind of the, <laughs> why I'm excited to hit today. I want to feel like I still got it even though I'm not there. Uh, you know, but I said, I think I could have won, you know. Probably not. <laughs> Top 8, probably not. Top 16, maybe. Top 32, yeah, okay. But... Yeah, truth is, I've done a lot of charity events and uh, been missing my family on the road a lot. So I just went to Oklahoma, hung out with them. And well, and like you said, I mean, if you're not getting top ten in the world, a you're not getting televised. B you're not really making any money to do it. Right. So, oh, that one's in the tree. Is it? Well, Safe four range. There's a guy at that house, Dan. Going right at it. He's at his patio. Is he watching us hit bombs? That'd be funny. Um, oh no, 209.8, 151. Rookie numbers, gotta pump those numbers up. Great. How do you do your training sessions? Do you rip ball speed like, and go like just cl show club speed, ball speed and not care where the ball goes? Or do you do work on ball speed with actually? Yeah, I always care where the ball goes. <laughs> um, you always care where the ball goes? Yeah. I think I try and do separate sessions. Like I'll try and combine them, like I'll go for all out club and ball not care where it goes yeah. and then i'll switch and do another day try and do both yeah I, I think that's okay too i think a combination is very good another one at three okay so now i've got my xr16 which you dan actually sent me the link to this you've got just the hookup on xr16s every xr16 i own is because of dan he <laughs> yeah. sold me one and then he sent me the link for one he found on amazon well, i'm so always I, looking for the x2 hot so i skipped that for you guys for you righties out there you don't know how good you got it they, oh my god yeah there's just we're fighting over uh 10 year old fucking 10 -year -old equipment hands. paying top dollar for it 9.9 there oh my god that hooked Speeds are up a little bit, I think because I'm, I'm refreshed from going home instead of beating myself up going to work. Is this the first time you've hit in since some ter some tournaments? Like, first time hitting in like, what, four days probably, or? Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, that's ripped. That is killed. Perfect tight draw. What are those numbers? That looked massive. 152 club speed, according to Flight Scope. 209.3. 209 so kind of cruising with good balls at 209 it's right now. It's crazy how inaccurate that um, attack angle is on Flight Scope for your, yeah, just, right, like minus seven. Yeah, it's, just, it's, <laughs> like, it's like you got a lob wedge in hand. Yeah. Well, that's why I don't trust any of the club data. 
But I do trust the ball speed. It's nice and accurate, which is good. That's a good ball by the kid. Well, we're just, yeah, super lucky with how this laid out since the other side of that range is closed for overseeding. We have a free 390 yards. A free 390 yards for Dan, which is great, and a free 90 yards left to right for me, which is great. All right, well, uh, I'll let you get in on the flight scope now. Sounds good. Grab one more on your PRGR and move over. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I wish that one was on the flight scope, actually. I like that club there. Well, it'll still measure your ball speed. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it'll still measure the ball speed, as it doesn't. Yeah, I think uh, this it, it measured your recoil. You were 91 miles per hour on the recoil. Which is funny, because I rarely recoil, which is actually very, I just was saying this to Dan, which is very risky to do with a TPT. <laughs> so yeah. I should be careful with, yeah. with my TPT. With his TPT. <laughs> Um, and trust that your numbers are consistent and whether or not you're improving that's a good ball yeah two those are like as uh, bobby would say two prototypical shot shapes <laughs> <laughs> 142 192 right. so like dan was saying and it's weird because man i'd love to test all of the monitors we could possibly test at once because this is showing 142 now on Bushnell, that would show 144, but on PRGR it, and Trackman, it would show like, what, 139, 138? Yeah, so what, <laughs> we, what we agreed on though, the ball speed there is 192. So the ball speed would be the same on this one PRGR, it'll be the same on the Trackman, the same on the Bushnell. Yeah. So we work off ball speed, try to improve that number, don't worry about the club speeds, just let the ball speeds take care of themselves, and I think that's a better way to practice. So this PRGR, it measures ball speed perfectly, but only goes up to 201 miles per hour. Which, which if you, hasn't been a problem for me yet. Right. <laughs> well, you averaged over 201. It would have I did, it. yeah, for so 20 what, that so the other day. If you get over 201, you just keep working off your club speeds because they're pretty accurate. Um, and try to get it faster. There it is. Watch it land and roll. Let's see. Come on. Oh, it must have been spinny. 197 ball. Trying to catch up to Dan here. Yeah. So right there, I got a 140-201. Yeah, so that just shows how different the flight scope is compared to that. Which sucks for me. Like, I, I've only ever hit range balls, really. I've never speed trained with good balls. So, like, back home, I'm hitting pinnacle range balls, and most of them are all broken. So I only look at club speed on this because I know ball speed's going to be off. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I've practiced for so long looking at club speed and now, and it's good to get those tests done to find out that, hey, I've been doing it wrong. So now yeah. it's time to make adjustments, but see if we can see 200 here. Right. 196.4. Right. Do you find you're faster, like, so you've taken four days off, are you feeling like your body's relaxed, you're better, so you'll come out faster today, or are you better if you do like a priming session the day before? Yeah, I'm be I'm better today. I thought about doing a priming session late last night when I got in, but I decided just to uh, kind of relax and work on the swing a little bit, work on the body to kind of keep the core tight so I can, I can rotate, right. kind of feel the moves and prepare the practice that I wanted to bring into today. Yeah. So I was kind of coming in today with an idea of a swing thought I wanted to have already. Gotcha. So, yeah, so like me, I do the, well, and I guess my month is a little bit skewed because I'm only here for a month-ish, so I'm taking all the opportunities I can to hit balls. I took one day off, and that was yesterday, just to go pick up that, <laughs> the X2, and then go to San Diego for a day. Yeah. But other than that, I've hit balls every day for a month. Wow. And most of them have been speed sessions. Yeah, so I think I've, I've run into that issue as well where I'm just swinging all the time. I'm not really thinking about the body and how it's... Uh, how it's supposed to be moving. How it's supposed to be moving. Yeah. Also, you know, getting to go back to Oklahoma, see my wife and son and family for four days and not touch a club after traveling, doing lots of charity events. It was really 
really good to kind of wind down and rest and my wife has like a sound bowl healing healing hideaway it's like a meditation type of Ooh. so it was, it was really great to kind of shut my mind and just unwind yeah exactly so that, that's why i'm feeling fresh today but also yeah I mean, we're not at Worlds, and the championship's going on tonight, so there's yeah. a little extra energy in the air for us, at least. Exactly, yeah, you day. see you see guys putting up, well, for you, more attainable numbers to go and chase. For me, not really, but then it, it's the trickle-down effect. So Dan sees the numbers they're putting up, says, I can do that too. I want to prove to himself he's going to go do that. And then I look at Dan's numbers, and now I'm chasing those. So it's just that, that yeah, trickle-down. And, and, we, and we have different goals. You want to... Uh, kind of take the Andrew Agner approach in the amateur division, build your way up, build a swing, uh, compete, win some sets, and just learn that way. So anybody out there that wants to try, that's the way to do it. Come on, 200. One ninety-eight eight. Oh, four right. Oh my, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> so there's the old snap hook. 